Joining me now are Lisa Lehrer, New York Times political correspondent, and Charlie Sykes, founder and editor-at-large at The Bulwark. Lisa, when we were writing the um, names of people who are still in the running, there was a, a concern on the part of all of us that they would be gone before we even got to air. <laughs> That's how quickly this is moving. What does the churn suggest to you? Uh, the churn suggests a party in chaos, a leaderless, directionless party that is uh, flailing around trying to fulfill one of the most basic functions of governance. I mean, really, the House in many ways in this in our current system doesn't even have that much power. Sure, yes, they can keep the government from shutting down, which is, of course, a really big deal and a thing that we're all going to have to deal with sooner than I think everybody would like in November. But, you know, the Senate is controlled by Democrats. The White House is controlled by Democrats. They are not putting out a broad conservative agenda that's going to be passed into law. This is, besides the budgetary function, a largely symbolic post in many ways, and they are failing at the symbolism. So I, I think what it suggests and what America is seeing is a party that is just in complete disarray right now. Um, uh, Charlie, we have some, this is a kinetic situation down in the House. They are voting right now and not on the floor. They are voting amongst mm -hmm. themselves to determine who gets to be the next nominee for however long. Mike Johnson, apparently, if I'm right, has the most votes with 80, with 85 votes. Byron Donalds is second. Now, Mike, Byron Donalds, Florida congressman, big Trump supporter, has not served a full term in Congress yet. Mike Johnson, who the Times refers to as the most important architect of the mm -hmm. resistance to electoral certification, electoral college certification in the House. What do you make of uh, these two, shall we call them, front runners of the moment, Charlie? Well, we're, we're, we're deep into this doom loop of, of crazy and absurdity. I mean, the fact that we are now down to plan E or plan F, and you're talking about the backbenchers like this, is an indication exactly what Lisa just mentioned. This is a complete disarray. It is complete chaos. Um, there's no idea right now that is uh, too crazy uh, to be vaguely plausible because they've they basically burned through all of the non-crazy options, including some of the crazy options. So the the whole notion of 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 a unity ticket between Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan, uh, Jim Jordan would be what the assistant to the speaker, the assistant speaker, a job that does not actually exist. Yes. I mean, this shows how desperate they are. Um, to come up with something. And the fact that we are now in the fourth week of doing this is an indication that there may not be any solution. There are at least eight members of what Ben Witt has called uh, the, the crazed slavering jackal caucus who are not going to support any sort of a normal uh, speaker. And there are maybe 20 um, normie, moderate you know, establishment Republicans that are not going to allow a legislative terrorist. So there's no solution to get to 217 votes. Why they're going through this, this exercise of nominating somebody knowing that they, they may be dropping out after four hours is an indication. And by the way, obviously hanging over all of this is the apex predator of the GOP, Donald Trump, who did flex his muscles. He does not have enough clout to elect one of his, his MAGA uh, acolytes to be the speaker, like Jim Jordan. But as he reminded us today, he can destroy any political career. And he is demanding absolute loyalty and absolute litmus test of belief in the big lie and support for his efforts to overturn the election if you want to have even the slightest chance of having a political future in this particular house. It yeah. is that crazy. 